Well, welcome to our service today. I'm Bernard Smalls, and I want to thank you so much for joining us. Today, I want to talk to you about the topic of dreaming, and we're going to talk about how to live God's dream for your life. First of all, I believe it's very important that we understand the power of dreaming and the importance of dreaming and the place that dreaming holds in the scheme of things. When most people hear of dreams, they think of people that are polyanic or people that are just kind of daydreaming. But no, I'm talking about that divine initiative that puts you on the periphery of God-likeness and causes all things to be possible in your life. And that's the way the Creator set it up. The Creator designed every man, every woman, every human being to be a dreamer. So whether you're dreaming or not, you have the dreaming capacity in you. And what I want to do is awaken that capacity and show you how to apply it. The acceptance that life can be great or grand is an awesome concept. And people that accept the fact that life can be great or life can be grand are dreamers. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 3. Thank you for joining me. Ecclesiastes 5, 3 says, For a dream comes through much business, and a fool's voice is known by every word. So notice that the contrast is between the dreamer and the fool. And scripture says the dream comes through much busyness. That means you got to get at it. You got to be active. You got to be in the arena. You need to be working out your dream, expanding your dream, developing your dream, thinking about your dream. See, I believe the creator looked down at men after creating them. And um, this is just kind of a paraphrase. I'm not saying this is exactly what God did. He said, I'm going to give this one this dream, this one that dream, this one this dream, this one that dream, this one's going to be this type of dreamer. Now we're going to see what people will do with what I have given them. Now, I know that if you believe in the divine being we call God, you believe that from eternity, whatever purpose God has was for us and in us. But what I'm saying is every human is given by God the capacity to dream. So the big question is, what are we doing with the capacity to dream? to the floor, desperately searching, crying out for more. Father, you know me, you've seen me through and through. I don't want another, all I want is you. The love of your Father cleanse me white as snow. Now I can come boldly, boldly towards your throne. Not just your hand, God, your face I know you'll show. Pour yourself out, overflow. In your presence there's fullness of joy. And that your Acts chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. So now we see God talking about what's going to happen in the last days in which I believe we are living 
We are living in the time of visions and dreams. And it's interesting that God says, I'm going to pour out my spirit. And with the outpouring of the spirit would be visions and dreams. So if you are a Christian and you have received God's spirit, God has placed a dream in your heart. But the big thing is living out the dream. Now, when you start dreaming and you start practicing living your dream, there's some interesting things that happen. First of all, all of us at some time or another have dreamed of something great. Even when you were a child, what did you dream of? Maybe of being a policeman or being a doctor or being a lawyer or being an astronaut or being a farmer or maybe being a cowboy. You said being a cowboy is not great. Well, if you're a Dallas cowboy, <laughs> okay, low fun for you Dallas folks, America's team. But whatever you had in your mind, in your heart, maybe you dreamt of being a pro football player or a pro basketball player or a professional musician. Something when that dream grasped you. I remember when I was around 10 years old, I learned to play the drums and I fell in love with the drums right away. And I started to dream of being a professional drummer. And from 10 to about 20, all of my life was basically music. All right. And then I accepted Christ and had to get away from some of the influences. So, but I had a dream in my heart to be that professional drummer and God had another plan. All right. So all of us have had a dream at one time or another of something great. Secondly, dreaming illustrates your hidden capacities and your unwakened abilities. Dreaming lets you know that you have capacities within you. And one of the things I want to do here at Prevailing Word is to awaken that capacity in you. Third thing is dreams create a sense of greatness. Why? When you're dreaming, you're on the periphery of God-likeness. You know why? You begin creating something out of nothing, and dreams are the birthplace of goals. I trust that you're enjoying our study on the subject of dreaming, and we're talking about how to live God's dream for your life. Now, here are some things I want you to think about when you start living the dream. First of all, life is more inward than outward. And that's one of the things we're discovering everywhere, that life is really inside out because that's the way God created us to live. Anytime you learn to live from the inside, you start tapping into dreams, visions, possibilities, faith, hope, love, the things that God has placed on the inside of you. Anytime you live your life based on the outward circumstances, you're looking at politics, you're looking at finances, you're looking at the economy, you're looking at circumstances, you're looking at people, you know, how stupid these people are or how bright you think these people are. God created us to live from the inside out. And whether you're rich or poor, you're created in the image of God with the capacity to dream from the inside. Life is more inward than outward. And most people live their lives based on external realities. What I want to teach you how to do is live by internal realities or dreams. Many wait a lifetime for an opportunity to present itself while others pursue the dream. The dream that people have usually is dependent on circumstances, location, or situation. But the true dreamer goes to work to make it happen regardless of the circumstance. Like, for instance, I share my story because it just helps people to understand um, me. Plus, it's my testimony. When I had the dream of playing the drums professionally as a 10-year-old in South Carolina, I could have let my circumstances limit me because most of my friends that grew up in that area never really left that area. Well, when I was 18, I was in California. I was in the Oakland Bay Area, uh, 17 going on 18, right out of high school, playing music because I had a vision and a dream. Now, no, 
that wasn't a spiritual vision and a spiritual dream like we're teaching for you to fulfill God's purpose in your life, but I'm using that as an illustration. Many people said, you're having a pipe dream. You'll never go to California. <laughs> you're from Oakley, South Carolina. Well, a pipe dream is this. The term originated from opium smoking, <laughs> where illusions come and go. You ever smoked any of that stuff? Well, when you're puffing on that pipe, you start having pipe dreams. No, I didn't have a pipe dream. I had a dream of reality that took us to the doorstep of a Motown deal. Dreams are the birthplace of goals. Now, I want to give you four reasons why dreams seem to fail, why dreams seem to not always come true. And when you understand these, it'll change your life. Now, remember, a dream comes by much business, but a fool's voice is known for the multitude of words. Number one, the first thing is this. If all you do is talk, not much will happen. If all you do is talk, not much will happen. Why the fool's voice is known for the multitude of words, but the dreamer is taking positive action. Number two, dreaming is only the beginning and is there to provide a panoramic view. A panoramic view means you can see all around you. But what we do is we make the dream the end and we're kind of like daydreaming and we end up with a nightmare. We, we're not talking about daydreaming here. We're talking about a dream that leads to positive action. Number three, many dreams are frivolous, lighthearted fantasies just to get people away from reality. Do you know why some people dream? They want to escape reality. Finally, number four, great dreams are not instant and very often they are hard won. See, when you get a dream from God, even though God gave you the dream, doesn't mean it's going to come to pass right away. If you don't believe me, just ask Joseph. Read the story of Joseph, particularly Genesis chapter 37 through 40, and you'll see that dreams sometimes look like they're not going to happen. What do you do when your dream starts to fade, starts to fail, when it looks like it's not going to happen? Well, I'm going to show you what to do, but first of all, you need to realize that all great people that accomplished great things were dreamers. Sir Winston Churchill did not achieve his dream until he was about to retire. Martin Luther King Jr. died for his dream. Mahatma Gandhi was assassinated before his dream was fulfilled. So what's the cost? <laughs> what's the cost? What is the cost of achieving your dream? If you're serious about it, it's your life. Your dream will cost you your life. But think of it this way. You're going to exchange your life for something. I mean, today is a day you're going to live, whether you sit there on the couch with the remote control or whether you go to the gym and get some exercise, whether you decide to just sit there and eat ice cream or you decide to start writing a book, you're still exchanging your life. The dream will cost you your life. Now let's talk about how to live your dreams. I'm going to give you five practical things that if you will do, you will activate and move toward your dream. And I even believe if you follow God with these, you will accomplish your dream. So we're talking about how to live the dream that God has placed in your heart. We're not just talking about you coming up with a dream, but a dream that is a divine destiny for your life. First of all, you can achieve awesome possibilities if you learn what I'm about to teach you. All things are possible to you. Your dream is possible. Your dream is not just probable. Your dream can come to pass, but you need to do these five practical things. Number one, seek to find your magnificent obsession. What is this one thing that you must do? The Apostle Paul in Philippians 3.13 spoke of this one thing I do, 
forgetting the things that are behind, pressing, reaching for the things which are before I press towards the mark. So the one thing must be understood. Number two, read biographies. Read biographies of great achievers. And when you see how people have overcome incredible odds, it gives you hope. Like recently, I was watching a show on TV about Martha Stewart and what she went through going to jail and all of that, and how when she came back, she blew up bigger in another way. And when you read stuff like that, it gives you hope. Maybe you're in jail, or maybe you know someone that's in jail. Jail is not the end of life. Read biographies of people that have overcome incredible odds. And today, you can even listen to audio. The great thing is we have so many audio programs that are available. And I encourage you, if you listen to audios, just take notes. Number three, expose yourself to situations that will stretch you mentally, stretch your mental courage and capacity, meaning put yourself in situations that will challenge you. See, many of you, you avoid anything that looks like it's going to be hard or going to be a challenge or that's going to demand that you get out of your comfort zone. But you got to do it. You got to expose yourself intentionally to things that will stretch you, not things that will hurt you, not things that will kill you, but things that will stretch you. Number four, if you're going to live your dream, you must develop an inspirational dissatisfaction with the status quo. You must get to the place you're no longer happy with the status quo. You're not satisfied with the status quo. If you're satisfied with the status quo, the norm, you will never live your dream. And finally, number five, get out of your comfort zone. You gotta get out of the comfort zone and into the pain arena. You've gotta to commit to moving forward. Maybe your dream is to be an entrepreneur, a business person. Well, commit to moving forward with business. And you might check out our destiny program. If you go to Center for I Am, scroll down on the homepage, centerforiam.com, scroll down on the homepage and click on that eagle, it'll take you to the destiny program. Uh, it'll get you out of your comfort zone. See, many are in a comfort zone. You must commit to moving forward entrepreneurially with serious intent, and you must get in to the pain arena because we teach that success is the willingness to bear pain, not to be a pain. All right, in conclusion today, I want you to understand that dreams just don't happen. Dreams just don't come true just because you had a dream. But a dream comes by much busyness and the dreamer must get into the arena and get active and start working. But remember, the fool is known by many words. So we have dreamers that act and fools that talk. Are you a dreamer? <laughs> I won't ask you, are you a fool? Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for teaching us today. Open the eyes and hearts of people and bless their lives. Prosper them to live their dreams. In Jesus' name, amen. Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. If you believe in what we're doing here, I want you to give an offering, give a donation. Go over to the Give tab on our website, which is prevailingwordnow.com. Scroll down to the Give tab and just go ahead and click there. And it's an easy, simple, quick, digital transaction. Father, I believe for your blessing on the giver. I decree them blessed and prosperous. Now you agree with that. Some people say, well, that's kind of strange. How can you just speak things like that and expect them to happen? Because we believe in the creative power of the spoken word. And when I speak a word and you agree with it, you're blessed. So say after me, I'm a giver. I am blessed. I am prosperous. I am doing well. My soul is prospering in the word of God. My finances prosper as I hear the word of God. Well, thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Well, thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed our teaching, please share it with someone else. Please share this broadcast 
whether you are watching by YouTube, by Facebook Live, or by our TV broadcast. By the way, stay tuned as we discover uh, and reveal to you more things that we have coming in the future concerning the work and concerning the teaching here. We just want to bring a positive message to a negative world. And thank you so much for being a part of the dream. Remember to visit us on the World Wide Web at prevailingwordnow.com. And if you're in the Atlanta area, come out to meet us, come out to a meeting. I'd like to meet you personally. My prayer for you as always is simple. May God expand your life until your destiny is fulfilled. Have a great day. I want to tell you about something new and exciting that's happening. On March 30th, Saturday, March 30th, we will have our special Easter service. So if you're in the Atlanta area, I invite you to come out and join us. And by the way, this will be the launch or the planting of Prevailing Word Pavilion. Our services are short, simple, to the point. You'll come in, we'll make you feel at home, you'll be blessed, and then you can go out and enjoy the rest of your evening. And that Saturday evening, we will be meeting at 6 p.m. March 30th. For more information, simply go to my website, which is prevailingwordnow.com, and click on the meeting tab, and I'll see you there. Let's rise up to positive living. Hands towards heaven, my knees to the floor. That's really searching, crying out for more. Father, you know me, seen me through and through. I don't want another, all I want is you. The love of your Father, cleanse me white as snow. Now I can come boldly, boldly towards your throne. Not just your hand, God, your face I know you'll show Pour yourself out Overflow In your presence This fullness of joy And at your right hand Our pleasures, oh Lord You said seek it I'll find you until I Till I overflow In your presence this fullness of joy And now your right and our pleasures, oh Lord You said seek it, I'll find you until I Till I In your presence, this fullness of joy, and on your right hand, our pleasures, oh Lord. You said, Seek and I'll find you until I, until I, seek and I'll find you till I, till I pour yourself. 